So, a Gravis. Gravis joystick. Oh boy. <laughs> This is not easy to control with an analog joystick. You have to move. Um, <clears throat> you have to move the joystick in all the way in the direction. See, it's not going down. It's only when you. It's only when you push it halfway down or three quarters of the way down. It doesn't go down. It's like all the way. So the joystick works okay. Not my choice for for this kind of game. <laughs> Ooh, square drivers. Square drivers, interesting. It looks like somebody's been into this before. I think I have a square driver. I'll go get it. So. I seem to not be able to find my square driver. I'm going to use an Allen. We're just threaded into plastic, so the chances of me stripping something out are pretty low. I thought maybe these were adjustments and there's holes there, but <clears throat> excuse me, but uh, there's nothing in there. It's just hmm, some kind of feature this one doesn't have. That's pretty dirty. Ooh -wee. So I guess these have to come out to... Oh boy. Okay, so... So much for me not uh, stripping something out. Well, I haven't yet, but I'm afraid to... Okay, this flathead's gonna work better. Go into the corners. No. I gotta find a square drive. So, I can't find my square drive, so I made one. I ground down a um, flathead. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. It fits pretty good. Should be able to get a few pounds of pressure on there without stripping anything out. Ooh, boy, that was really on there. Oh boy, you did it now. Oh, okay. I get it. So the way this works is you've got spring, spring tensioned. These are the springs and they go up against these ball bearings. And so when you rotate this, the ball bearing moves into another notch. This felt like it only had like 
three settings of tension, but it's just because the ball bearing's not sliding on there very easily. But you know, the, the ball bearing compresses the spring more and more Oop. as you rotate it. And then there is a uh, Right, okay, so, and there's a little key here. It serves as a key. It goes into these three notches. So it only does click three times, which is weird. Uh, it must be that when the tension gets really low and the springs are looser. Right, okay, yeah. As the tension gets really low on the springs and they're looser, this guy, you're depending upon this guy to create the stops. Otherwise, uh, you know, to keep this thing from moving, first of all, and to also give some kind of positive feel. Right, and these are basically potentiometers, yeah? Oh, you know what? These are configuration. These are for configuring what each button does. So you move this around and it, it makes the three buttons do three different things. Probably the three, um, the three possible fire buttons you can have on a you know, video game system or an Amiga or whatever. So there's the analog pot. You move this around. And then over here is the analog pot for that. Oh, here are the adjustments right here for calibration. Um, I think, right? No? No. <laughs> These pots are, I mean, it's quite, you can see they're, they're not enclosed. You can see what's going on in there. So, uh, but I still don't see a way to calibrate the thing. I, I don't, uh, oh. Okay, yeah, you know what? Those are adjustments. They, they, they're not there. They were a screw that manipulated these two things and, and changed the angle of the pots, but um, they've been glued in. Epoxy. It's not soft like hot melt, it's epoxy. So, you know, I know I've seen these that have adjustment, adjustable X and Y centering, but um, not this one. Just seeing if I see any evidence of uh, something that may have been removed. <clears throat> think so. Comment if yours had adjustment for calibration, but this one sure doesn't. So anyway, it looks like I got a lot of cleaning to do. The joystick works, we just need to do a lot of cleaning. Yeah, this is definitely an area that's pr would be is prone to collecting dirt. You know, whatever you're doing, this handle is a little bit uh, worn. The foam padding on it. Anyway, so anything that falls down the center, such as you know what, I bet most of this is this stuff here that's worn off. It just falls down in here and. Ooh, we got a nasty little pinch there. Hmm. 
Hmm. Maybe I'll just put a dab of uh, hot milk glue on the top of that. To... I have a liquid electrical tape that I could use, but hot melt glue, I know I've been using that a lot, but uh, it not only will seal it and protect it, but it will also stabilize it. It'll keep it from bending anymore. Another good use for it. So these are wipers, that's what they call these. Where they wipe across contacts and make a connection. This one has a really smooth, tensioned, I don't even know if that's, and this one's kind of loose. Um, I guess we have to have those <clears throat> out of there. See how easy this is going to be. Seems like they're just press fit. Just need some leverage, I guess. Here we go. See, it's coming off. There we go. Ah. Oh. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So this one's nice and smooth. This one's got issues. It may just be... <clears throat> I need to, you know, there might be some pieces of metal stuck in there or whatever. That's interesting, a little, a little C-clamp. So this whole thing comes apart. Get the alignment on this back the way it was. Oh yeah, it's got a key. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. But it's got a it's got a key right there in the brass. It goes into that slot. So just the same. I'll only take one of these apart at a time. Look at that. That's 
seems like it's just dirt. Yeah, well, so what do we do? You know, it's got some, I can't really tell, I can't see inside there, but I imagine it's gonna have some pitting in there. Um, this is just not <clears throat> a very good, bush basically what we we're talking about here is a bushing, uh, you know, a non-rotational, non-movable bearing. Uh, sort of thing and as I turn it I don't know if you can hear it but it's kind of making a scraping noise so now uh, first we determine what you know we have some pitting somewhere probably some foreign material got in there and scratched things up kind of ruined the finish of the uh, this is stainless obviously but um, you know, it's got it's got some lines going around, which means something got caught up in there and just kind of dug a, a channel. So I'm gonna feel this way, and, and it really doesn't feel that bad. Um, looking in the uh, hole here. just doesn't sound very good you know this fire button this top thumbstick thing is really going to be an issue for me I'm going to desolder it get it out of the way Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> I've used some Brasso, which is a polish on this guy. And he came out looking pretty good and feeling pretty good. Do with a little more rubbing but anyway so as far as this part goes it's got more uh, pitting than this does because this this is a more of a stainless steel and this is more of a you know pot metal or whoever in the heck knows what that is anyway um, <clears throat> I'm going to put some of this on a Q-tip, uh, an earbud, and put it on a drill and stick it in the hole there and see how polished we can make it. I just did this a bunch, you know. That's pretty good. I can't feel the scoring anymore. I can see a little bit of it, but I can't feel it.
you're just taking more Q-tips and stealing the cotton out of them. Kind of spreading them apart if I can. Yeah. And shoving them on there. So these brackets that go back and forth, they're just held in there. They're not really held in there at all, are they? <laughs> I think heavier grease might be a problem with this because because of the tensioning system. So this is real lube. It's obviously for fishing reels or whatever. Pretty easy to see where to lube this because there's uh, wear marks on it. Of course, the only problem with using grease or any lubrication is that it will catch dirt. This tensioning system is going to be the actual pain in the butt as far as, well, maybe if I just loop things up a little bit, 
it'll just work okay. I don't really know anything else to do. Obviously, we're not going to use, uh, we, want, we would want to use an oil rather than a grease. I don't really see a need to lubricate too much except for I'd really like to lubricate the ball bearings. That's what I'd really like to because they're really doing a lot of the work. Oops. <clears throat> by bouncing themselves up and down this thing. So I have a light oil here. I guess Okay, well the one thing I'm going to do is, I'd be tempted to lubricate this part, but this really has direct contact with the outside world and it's going to just become a magnet for dirt. It already is. And I guess once in a while you could do this with it. If you own it and you're using it, you could just, but um, yeah, I'm just going to leave this as is with no lubrication as designed. So I did put a little bit of uh, heat shrink, or uh, duh, um, hot milk glue on there. So it's nice and stiff. Okay, so uh, <laughs> this looks like it's gonna be pretty tricky. Getting it back in. Keep these things from moving around, huh? Oh, and it's likely that this wire became pinched, you know, because of all the frickin' mechanicals going on around here. So I just want to make sure I'm approaching it at a 45 degree angle, which are free angles here. go.
No, that's working the way it's supposed to. So these first couple of notches. Yeah, this, this thing here isn't really doing much. There's one more. There. So that's the first position in there. Yeah, this thing isn't doing anything. It's it's actually it's actually um, I didn't notice that, that before, but it's kind of sticking up. It's not doing anything, so it's no harm if I do something bad to it. So, but let me uh, use a heat gun on it and see if I can bend it down just a little bit. I have one of those solder rework stations with the. Uh, the heat gun that's kind of a pin has like a pinpoint on it. Well, it's smaller than the diameter of my finger anyway. And I think this is some sort of a nylon type material because it had a really low melting point. Fortunately, I didn't do anything to it. I started at 175 and uh, Celsius, I think, um, and the thing became pliable almost immediately. So um, not super pliable, just enough where I could put a divot in it with my with a pin. So I just bent it down. I was able to heat it up and bend it down. And now, This looks like a job for some loop, I think. Yeah. I'm not going to do anything about this discoloration. Obviously that portion of the plastic is like a silver color. I mean, I, it looks like it wore down, but this looks like it's injected molded plastic. So, oh, you know what? This was probably silver all the way around. And it was the silver that wore off. So, I could wear the rest of the silver off and it would look better. Yeah, let me do that.
Okay, so now we have three refurbished, uh, quite usable joysticks. And uh, I guess I'll just pass them along. I really don't need them. I have like three already. <laughs> Uh, my favorite one is a Genesis controller, which is great for uh, these old systems, and it uses the same 9-pin, but it's actually, it actually has a D-pad on it. Makes life a little bit easier. It's best thing Nintendo ever popularized was the D-pad. Anyway, so thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.